All right, here we are again with 2024 AP Statistics free response questions. Um, so if there are any corrections, because there's no official solutions, if there are any corrections, I will put it in the in a pinned comment below. So please check that if you are checking over my work. Um, let's just get into it now. Uh, I only skimmed some of the questions, but we'll just kind of go through this. So we have this exercise center has several thousand members range from here to here and several thousand members age 56 and older. The manager's center's center is considering offering online fitness classes. The manager is investigating whether members' opinions of taking online fitness classes differ by age. A random sample of 170 ages 18 to 55 and a random sample of 230 ages 56 and older. So we got two samples, two groups of samples. They are independent. Why are they independent? Because they are they are completely separate groups, right? We're going to randomly select them, completely separate, and they would be interested. Manager found 51 of the 170 and 79 of the 230 would be interested in taking online fitness classes. Do the data provide st this convincing statistical evidence of the difference in the proportion? So this is a two sample proportion test we're going to run for independent samples, all right? Um, complete, uh, would be, let's see, what do we wanna know? Who would be interested in online, in the proportion, who would be interested? Um, in the difference, statistical of, of a, if there's a difference. So I wanna know if there's a difference between the two groups. So um, I like to define these things. So P1 is the proportion of people uh, 51, sorry, uh, 18 to 55, who would, what did they ask them? Uh, said they would, would be interested, would be interested in online classes. And then P2 is gonna be the proportion. This is how I'm gonna define it, right? It's important to define them just because, so you, you, you um, so you're clear on what, we're, what you're looking for, 56 and older interested in online classes. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Now, we're gonna run a two proportion test, which means we have, to, we have to check the conditions, right? So the three conditions is that they are random samples. Check. The second thing is that they're independent. Um, so independence comes in two flavors when you're doing proportions. One is that your sample is less than 10% of, so your sample size say um, N1, which is equal to 170, um, is, this is for independence, um, is, let's see, less than 10% of the populate of, and what we would say is less than 10% of the total number has several thousand members, 10% of the members, right? Because there's thousands of them. So 10% of thousands is hundreds, right? So like that would be like like multiple hundreds. So that would work. And then N2, which is, um, what is the, the other one? Is 230 is less than 10% of members. Also in the thousands. Okay. And you may want to say, you know, members uh, 18 to 55 and members 56 and older, 56 plus. Okay, that's that's to say that when we pulled them, they were independent, right? Because you're 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 basically saying like, well, they're effectively independent because the pool, like, because I'm doing it without replacement, right? So technically, I have to do it with replacement for it to be completely independent. But we're doing it without replacement. But if the population is so big compared to the sample size, then it's okay that I didn't put them back in for replacement, right? So that's that's the idea, and they're also independent of each other. independent samples of each other because they're different groups they're different groups of people okay so that's the independence and then three is the normality condition normal normal condition and remember here we're using a binomial approxim normal approximation to the binomial distribution so we have to have n1 p1 to be greater than or equal to 10 n1 p1 minus p1 to be greater than or equal to 10 and then we need n2 p2 has to be greater than or equal to 10 and n to one minus p2 is greater than or equal to 10. Or in other words, the number of successes and failures in our thing have to be greater than 10. So in this case, the proportion of people who said is, is that's 51 is greater than or equal to 10, that's good. Then this one, uh, what's the leftover? 170 minus 51 is gonna be 
119. 119 is greater than or equal to 10. And then this one is 79 of 2. So 79 is greater than or equal to 10. And then here, 230 minus 79. I'm just going to use a calculator for this so I don't have to. My brain isn't totally working. 151 is greater than or equal to 10 also. And so we've checked those conditions. So we've checked the random sample. It's independent. It's a normal condition. Okay, so now we're going to run the actual hypothesis test part. Right? And so this is the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is, well, so what we're trying to show is that there's a difference. All we care if there's a difference. We don't care if there's one is greater than the other. We just want to know uh, evidence of a difference. So we want P1 to not equal P2. And our default assumption is that it's going to equal P2. So that is our null and alternative hypothesis. And then we're going to um, run, you know, just run a two prop uh, Z test. And then we'll just kind of say some of the parameters that we're going to run here. So, um, so let me do this. So second distribution. Oh, sorry. Uh, stat tests to proportion Z test. So X1. This is the number of people who, because it's a proportion of people who would be interested, this is the number of people in the first one that is interested. So that's 51. The total out of, of the 170. So 170 is the total. Then this one is going to be 79 out of 230 here, All right? And then we want not equal to, okay? So um, let's just, let's freeze the calculator there. We're going to say x1 is equal to 51, where n1 is equal to 170, x2 is equal to 79, and n2 is equal to 230. And then we're doing not equal to, so then we're going to calculate. We get a p-value is equal to 0 0.359. And I'm just going to double check that um, just because I've all I've had areas two prop Z test this this okay, not equal to. Um, so yeah, it looks like I did that right. So the p value is 0 0.359. Right, and that is greater than alpha, which is what is our assumed alpha here is 0 0.05. Right, so we failed to reject, so there is not enough evidence to say, to, to conclude there is a difference in proportion of exercise center members, exercise center members. Let me just scroll down a little bit. Center members. I'm going to circle this p-value, by the way, just to, who, um, who prefer, uh, how do I say this? Difference of exercise members ages, uh, a difference in proportion of exercise center members um, uh, who prefer, who would be interested in online classes between the two groups. The say, you got to say kind of the two groups here between the 18 to 55 and 56 plus years old, year olds. Okay, so cool. I know it's kind of wordy, but you always got to say that in context. So there's that one.